My name's David, and the chronological Bible reading for May 20th is Psalms 5, 38, 41, and 42. Psalm 5 is a bold prayer from David. Listen to my words, Yahweh. Consider my sighing. Pay attention to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for I pray to you. Why should God listen to me? Because I'm praying to him. Of course he should listen. That is boldly approaching God's throne, isn't it? How is it that David, a thousand years before the author of Hebrews wrote, let us boldly go before his throne in Hebrews 4 verse 16, praying these things in such a bold manner? How did David enter in to that relationship of knowing who God was and knowing that he could so boldly go before God saying, God, listen to me. I'm speaking to you. Remember, this is the same David who saw people struck dead because they touched the Ark of the Covenant. And he's saying, God, listen to me because I'm talking to you right now. David was living the new covenant Christian lifestyle a thousand years before the new covenant came into being, according to the way a lot of us think of Christianity. But the truth of the matter is Jesus died on the cross from the foundation of the world because God exists outside of time. He sees the end from the beginning. And so when we try to legalistically say we're part of a new covenant and yet by the way we live our life, the fruit that's coming out of our life, if it doesn't compare to David's, then we have no excuse. Psalm 38 begins, Yahweh, don't punish me in your anger. Don't discipline me in your wrath for your arrows have sunk into me and your hand has pressed down on me. Do you ever feel like God's hand has pressed down on you? Like arrows from God have sunken into you? Why would David feel this way? The same one who was just praying in Psalm 5, listen to me, I'm praying to you. Continuing, there's no soundness in my body because of your indignation. There's no health in my bones because of my sin. There is no rest for the weary when the weariness comes because someone is living in a manner that they know they're not supposed to live in. When somebody is doing something that they know they're not supposed to do, they will not find rest. Because God disciplines those he loves. If you are feeling the discipline of God, if you're feeling condemnation because of actions that you're engaged in, then stop doing them. Repent. Come out of agreement with a sin lifestyle. You see, when an unbeliever sins, they're doing their nature. When a believer sins, they're having forgotten who they are. But if you're living in sin and you believe in Jesus, you are living in two different worlds. You are going in two different directions and you're in danger of being ripped apart. But what the great message of the gospel says is true for you, just like it is for me. There is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ, who walk according to his spirit. If you feel like David, that you've been pierced with the arrows from God's bow, if you feel like David, that the hand of God Almighty is pushing you down, holding you back, preventing you from moving forward, it must be because of sin. If you are a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, you are called to righteousness. And you should rejoice that you're miserable in your sin because it's proof that God is calling you out of that lifestyle and into something that is more in keeping with the character of who you are in him. Your unhappiness as a sinner is evidence of God's grace at work in your life because he wants more, because he knows that you want more. He wants you to feel fulfilled because you were called to do great things. But there can no longer be any compromise. In these end days, the light is getting brighter and we are about to come into the greatest outpouring of God's Holy Spirit on mankind that the world has ever seen. And at the same time, the darkness is getting darker. The evil agenda of the wicked one who seeks to kill and steal and destroy 
is running rampant. Too many Christians for far too long have been sitting on the fence between good and bad, saying, I want to have one foot in the kingdom of heaven, but I don't really want to give up all of the sin that has been holding me back, all of the sin that I love so much. If you stay on the fence, you're in danger of being taken out when God sets off a nuke, obliterating the fence. Get off the fence and run towards your heavenly calling before it's too late. Psalm 41 says, Blessed or happy, successful is the one who is considerate of the poor. To not be considerate of the poor is to be spiritually proud. Do you think you're better than they are? Do you feel like you're more deserving of God's grace than the person panhandling on the street corner? Psalm 42 begins, As the deer longs for the water or pants for the water, so my soul longs, thirsts for you, O God. Think about a deer panting. Why would a deer pant? See these beautiful, majestic creatures in nature? If a deer is panting, it's because it's exhausted. If it's exhausted, it's because it's been running why would a deer run but to save its own life? A deer's only defense mechanism is to run. The deer that's exhausted after having been running for its life is panting, looking for water. So our souls should be panting, longing for fellowship with the Most High God. In the same way that deer needs a sip of water to cool its dry throat, to be able to push forward and escape those seeking to destroy it, so my soul longs after God, the living God. When can I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night. I am desperate for you, God. I must have God. There's no hope for me apart from God. I will do anything to enter into fellowship with you, God. As this psalmist preaches to his soul, why are you downcast within me? Even when you're running for your life, why are you so dejected? Why are you in such turmoil? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him. When you're going through hard times in this world, your weapon is praise. Raise your hallelujah. Preach to your soul and enter His rest. God bless you, my friends. Thank you for being on this journey with me. We'll see you live on Sundays, but right here every day. Peace and love be with you all.